uh, Negroes have only been getting into the uh, of the computer age since 1995 as, as a group, as a as block. But before then, you would find all of this stuff in books and newspapers and clippings and whatnot in the, the um, physical library. But the three reasons he gave was the first one, of course, that without Negro labor, he would not be able to find enough whites to do the work that Negroes were doing. And he would, if he had to pay Negroes, he felt that that would cut into his profit one, and it would give Negroes money. And that was a scary situation for white folks in that if Negroes had money, once a person has money, of course, they want to buy things. And the ownership of property is what gives a white male, or by default, or, or being a widow or whatever, a white female, um, the ability to vote. A lot of people uh, feel that white women were not allowed to vote. White women as a block were uh, ignored pretty much as domestic um, spouses of white males. But if a white woman owned property, then of course she had that, that vote as a property owner, as a business owner. She inherited a business from her father um, or her husband or, or any male. Um, she had the same um, responsibilities and whatnot that they had when they owned the property before they left it to her. But he felt that Negroes having money would cause a serious conflict for white folks, or white supremacy, that is. While they did not agree with the barbarianism, um, the barbarianism anymore, they did also did not believe that Negroes were equal to white, or should even be allowed to be considered to be equal with whites. And this is the president. He made many statements of, uh, throughout the, his, his career about how he felt about the Negro intelligence level, he, um, that they had the intelligence of, a, of an animal. Um, he made many references to their inferiority to whites. Um, and that white, he felt that whites were superior to the Negro population and that they were entitled by their gods, by, by white folks' gods, to be over black folks. So um, this is parts of history that are there, but many people um, watch over them or, or sweep them under the rug, which is a pretty lumpy rug. And they only give you the, the sweet and innocent and good made up parts. So we want to make sure that black folks understand how Juneteenth came about. It was the emancipating of Negroes in a small area in Texas two years after the so-called emancipation of Negroes by the um, then president. Uh, Lincoln, who said that if he could get white folks in the North and South to stop fighting each other over Negroes, he would not, he would never emancipate or free a single Negro. But in order to bring the Union back together and get people to get white folks to stop fighting each other, he had to come up with something. I mean, he had to agree to this. He didn't come up with it. He had to agree to this radical plan to bring the southern white folks to their knees. Without Negro labor, if Lincoln knew that without free Negro labor, he himself would be financially ruined if he freed the slaves. Well, he also knew that if he did that to the Confederate uh, uh, states and the Confederate companies and whatnot in those states, 
that they too would be financially ruined without free Negro labor. So he did not free Negroes in the entire country. Any uh, of the states that actually agreed with to be a part of the United States and actually agreed to um, be a part of the Union, he did not mess with their system. He, he allowed them to keep their slaves. And any uh, of the, the at that time, um, it was 12 to 14 states that were uh, very anti-federal uh, government, anti-union government. And to bring those states to their knees, he literally freed their particular slaves in those particular places. So you would have a Confederate state that now had, after you know, 400, 500 years, they had these Negroes, what they considered under control, physical control, and now these Negroes were about to be belligerent because they now have been uh, given a document or, or shown or um, made aware of a document that says that they don't have to do <clears throat> what their southern slave masters say anymore because they're now emancipated, not independent, emancipated, meaning you are free from these people. But it doesn't mean you are free, period. <laughs> OK, so we're going we're to explain the difference between that as well. Um, it's real important to understand the difference between emancipation and independence. So you know, the, he, Lincoln agreed to this radical plan, signed the executive order, and freed the Confederate slaves, only the Confederate slaves were freed by this order. And anyone who talks about how wonderful Lincoln are and how he freed the slaves obviously have never actually read the document. I listen to the president all the time, and it amazes me. Well, I know he has a white bread education, but there's so much black history that a white bread Negro misses that it becomes quite obvious when they're making speeches about things in history and you realize that they don't know this stuff or they have not been privy to it or someone has kept it from them. So you have um, him talking about the, the Lincoln's wonderful freedom of the slaves, but the first paragraph tells you that if he could get white folks from stop, to stop fighting each other, he would not free a single slave. He was actually against the freeing of a single slave, of any slave. He had to be talked into this radical plan. And as president, just like Obama, probably does not agree with more than half of the stuff that comes before him, he has put himself in this position of being the so-called leader of the United States. And therefore, when people put something in front of him, it, it, whether he agrees with it or not, he has to sign it because these people hold not only his, his job, they hold his financial future in their hands. So a lot of this stuff that they're calling Obama's health plan and Obama's this and Obama's that, that doesn't belong to Obama. Those are either white liberals, white Democrats, or white Republicans that are putting things before him for him to sign and be a good Negro president and, and do this for the good of the country. Whether, it's he, whether or not he feels it's good for the country is irrelevant. So um, as far as what is Juneteenth, we just found out what it was. Now today's Negroes celebrate Juneteenth from June 13th to June 19th. And June 19th is um, the date that they um, in, that is listed as the day that uh, the 
the U.S. Cavalry came in and made these southern, this area in Texas, uh, who was very, very vocal about not ever freeing their slaves, made the, this area free their slaves, which was supposed to be the last remnant of slavery in this one little area. And it became the poster child of defiance against the U.S. And so the U.S. sent and the cavalry to free these Negroes and bring down this area in Texas. And everybody cheered. And, of course, Negroes today go to different events and pretend that they are free from whites when they actually were just moved from physical slavery to mental slavery. So um, we're going to go through the next show of why do Negroes celebrate Juneteenth? And we're, we talked about a little bit today why they celebrate Juneteenth. But we're going to go into depth and help you understand the mentality behind it. And uh, the main two reasons that they celebrate uh, Juneteenth, for those of you that were not aware and just confused, is one, because Negroes, uh, then were happy to be out of physical slavery. That was the main thing. That's what they were cheering about. They, they were out of physical slavery. Um, this Calvary, the, the U.S. Um, newly formed Calvary came in and freed them from physical slavery, beatings, uh, rape, torture, murder, burning, all that good stuff, selling other children. And two, they did not know at the time that northern whites, which were doing, were these white saviors coming to free them, were actually moving them from physical southern slavery, which was, was very hard, to northern mental slavery, which made you feel like you had some kind of control um, until you realized that you were completely dominated by white laws, white politicians, white institutions, white religions, white people. Um, white people decided whether you could uh, go into the general store just like in the southern states. So many blacks found out that they were no freer to go into um, wherever they wanted to go in, in the north as they were in the South, they were quite limited. So, of course, this is the Need a Black Show, and this is part of the Black Community Fix-It campaign, and we're going to be dealing with Juneteenth, um, all the way up until the 19th of June. And for those of you that were not able to, to get the point, the dedication to Obama, it is called the Illusion of Inclusion. And you can either find it at the DYCTV website, or you can find it at our BHC Aberry site. That's B as in boy, C as in cat. I'm sorry, H as in Harry, C as in cat, A as in apple. B as in boy, E as in Edward, R as in Ralph, and I as in Institute, BHC Aberry. And my vision is getting bad, so if I am able to see tomorrow, I will definitely um, be back at you tomorrow. And we'll talk about exactly um, what Juneteenth is doing to black folks. Tomorrow we're going to um, go through, again, um, why Negroes celebrate Juneteenth. And then we're going to talk about um, what they are celebrating today. What are Negroes today celebrating? They have no cause for celebration. This should be a memorial, not a celebration. You got people um, having events at parks and, and whatnot. We're going to talk about the mentality behind Negroes celebrating being tricked by whites. This is the Black Community Fix It campaign. If you want to join the Black Community Fix It campaign, just go to BAC Aberry. B is in boy, H is in Harry, C is in cat, A is in apple, B is in boy, E is in Edward, R is in Ralph, I is in Institute. See you tomorrow.